Hello HQ, here is your lesson for the week. Thanks so much for joining us again. And if you are new here, welcome. Each week we look at the Bible and hear a true story that teaches us something important in our lives today. Last week, we looked at the importance of following God's instructions and how David received a special promise from God that a Messiah, anointed one, a special chosen forever king would come from his family. That king is Jesus, and we can be a part of that forever kingdom. How awesome is that? So for David, things seem to be going pretty well for him. He's the king of all of Israel and Judah. He's got a wonderful palace with a big family, lots of success in battle, and a special promise from God. But as we'll see in today's lesson, even men like David can fall into terrible sin. Our story begins in Israel during the springtime when kings went to war. David's army left to fight the enemies of Israel, but David stayed home in Jerusalem. Now, this proved to be a bad idea. He was a great, courageous king who should have been leading his army. And instead, he chose to stay home. While he was at home, he saw a woman, the wife of a man named Uriah. Now, Uriah was one of his fighting men who was off in battle, and Bathsheba stayed safely at home. Now, the Bible mentions that she was very beautiful, and David wanted her for his own wife. Well, his desires were against God's law. He was already married. She already had a husband, Uriah. And now when David realized that what he wanted was against God's law for us, what could he have done? Well, he could have prayed for God's help to turn away from it. He could have asked a friend to help him do the right thing. He could have reminded himself of God's word and how important it is to follow God's instructions. But David didn't do any of that. He didn't care. Sin and greediness, lust gripped his own heart. He was so caught up in his desire for Bathsheba that he tried to cover up his sin and nothing worked. Finally, David came up with a terrible plan to get rid of Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. 2 Samuel 11, 14 to 17 tells us that David asked his commander, Joab, to put Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him. Basically, to put Uriah in the battle where it's super dangerous and then to leave him there, so according to verse 15, so that he may be struck down and die. Verses 16 and 17 tell us that Joab did just that. As Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew there were valiant men. And the men of the city came out and fought with Joab, and some of the servants of David among the people fell. Uriah the Hittite also died. David's instructions basically made sure that Uriah died. Now, while he wasn't the one who physically killed Uriah, it's clear that it was the direct uh, result of David's plan that he died. When David found out, he brought Bathsheba into the palace to become his wife. By then, Bathsheba was expecting a baby that was David's child. David's sin was great. He stole a man's wife and murdered the man. Now, let's do an experiment to help us understand what happened to David. This glass is like David, and the water represents his heart, his feelings, emotions, and the choices that come from it. When David wanted Bathsheba as his wife, even though he is already married, he sinned. He broke the commandment about coveting wanting something that does not belong to him. When he acted on that feeling, he sinned. He broke the commandment about honoring God in marriage to not commit adultery. When David kept trying to cover up his sin, lying about it, he sinned. And finally, he had Uriah killed using Joab and the enemy. This demonstration shows that David's heart became stained, dirty with sin. Now, David chose to ignore his sin. He thought that he had covered it up by killing Uriah. Oh, look, I can't see it. Obviously, it's still there. Now, Bathsheba had become David's wife. David got what he wanted, and he thought he could pretend that nothing had happened. Have you ever encountered something like this in your life? Maybe you've tried to cover up or hide something bad that you've done by telling a lie or doing something else that was wrong. Or maybe you've noticed someone else in your family or your classroom do something wrong, but they don't get caught. Or they fake that everything's fine and perfect really well. Sin and disobedience never please God. And there are always consequences, even if they don't come right away. The same was true for David. You see, God sent one of his prophets, Nathan, to speak to David. Nathan was the one who had given God's good and wonderful promises that we learned about last week to David. But this time, David had a very different message to hear. This is from God's word, 2 Samuel 12, 1 to 4. The Lord sent the prophet Nathan to David, and when Nathan came to him, he said, two men lived in the same town. One was rich, the other was poor. 
The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but all the poor man had was one little female lamb. He had bought it, he raised it, it grew up with him and his children, it shared his food, it drank from his cup, it even slept in his arms. It was just like a daughter to him. One day a traveler came to the rich man and the rich man wanted to prepare a meal for him. But he didn't want to kill one of his own sheep or cattle. Instead, he took the little female lamb that belonged to the poor man. And the rich man cooked it for the traveler who had come to him. So this rich man, who had so many lambs of his own, didn't want to use one of his own. And he killed the poor man's lamb, the pet, the only thing he had, and served it for dinner. How terrible is that? Now, what do you think David thought when he heard that story? The Bible says in verse 5 that David was furious. He was very angry. He said that the man who stole the poor man's lamb should be punished and put to death. He said that he should be forced to pay back the poor man four times as much to give him back four lambs. He was so upset that the rich man in Nathan's story didn't have any feelings, no empathy for others. Now, this is one of my favorite parts of the story, Nathan's response. Nathan says to David, you are the man. Now, obviously, he didn't steal and kill the lamb. It was a parable, a story that had a bigger meaning where the characters stood for someone else. So in this parable, David was the rich man. The poor man was Uriah, and the little lamb in the story stood for Bathsheba. Nathan told the story so David could see his own sin. And we need this too sometimes. Too often it's easy for us to ignore or overlook our own sin uh, in our lives. Uh, it's easy for us to make excuses and think it's not a big deal or even say it's fine and it's okay. However, when we notice other people sinning or breaking the rules, somehow it becomes super easy for us to notice and tell on them and point it out or try to get them in trouble. Through Nathan telling this story, God was showing David that his sin in his life was actually a big deal. And David actually agreed. When it was about a rich man stealing a lamb, David knew it was wrong and worthy of punishment. Nathan was now comparing David to this rich man who had everything he needed, just like David. The rich man took what he wanted from someone else, even though it wasn't right, just like David. What's important to notice is David's next response. 2 Samuel 12, 13 to 14 shows that David realizes that he sinned against the Lord. He's sorry for what he has done. Nathan shows just how loving and forgiving God is. He says to David that God will put away or remove his sin, that David will not die, that God forgave him. But even though God did forgive, David was still punished. Nathan said there would be conflict and trouble in David's family because of his sin and that the baby with Bathsheba would die. This is obviously very, very sad news. But David understood there would be consequences for his sin while he was still forgiven. David had to learn not to break God's commands. And the same is true for us too. We need to be careful and check our hearts often so that sin doesn't sneak in and take a hold of us. It's easy for that to happen because we are all born sinners. It's only by trusting in Jesus and his grace that we can live a life that's pleasing to him. So today in your faith at home, you'll look at some verses in Psalm 51, a song poem written by King David about this exact story. You'll have a chance to see what David was thinking, feeling, and how he prayed to God in this time. Spoiler alert, the first four verses talk about God's mercy, how he washes us and cleanses us of our iniquity or, or sin. David is asking for God's mercy and forgiveness. If we go back to our demonstration, we can use some bleach here to represent God's mercy and forgiveness. He was made clean and new again. David realized that he sinned against the Lord, our holy God, and although his sin hurt others, like Bathsheba, Uriah, and the baby, David's sin was really against God. And David confessed, repented, turned away from his sin, and he was sorry for what he had done. He asked for God's mercy and forgiveness. And so when we sin, we hurt ourselves and others too. Yet our sins, like David's, they're against God first. God is the one we should respect and, and fear and honor. 
and God is the one who will punish. However, the good news is that God has promised to forgive us when we confess our sin and ask for forgiveness, to cleanse us just like the water was cleansed, like David's heart was cleansed. God does that in our hearts too. We don't have to keep on feeling guilty because of our sin and because of Jesus' death on the cross, we have been cleansed from those sins and forgiven. When David sinned, it was pretty terrible. So it's pretty easy to understand why God would need to punish him. Uh, but the sins we do, sometimes we think that they're just small, not really a big deal. They're actually just as bad. God doesn't measure how big or small our sins are. He is holy, so any and every sin we do counts. And just like David, there might be things we try to get away with thinking that no one will notice, but God notices. Because he is faithful and fair, full of justice, he must punish all sin. So the next time you're tempted to do something wrong and it seems like just a little thing, take a deep breath and think again and ask God to help you make the right decision to say no to sin, no matter how large or small it may be. And the wonderful news is, we don't have to do any of this on our own. God provided a way for us to be saved from our sins through Jesus Christ. And all who come to him, ask for forgiveness from their sin and believe in Jesus, they can be made right with God. We can have forgiveness and joy and peace with God. And with God's help, the Holy Spirit, we can make the right choices whenever we are tempted to sin. God's word, the Bible helps us do this, uh, which is why we study it. We want God and his word to change our hearts and the way we live. So as you spend some time in prayer today, thank God for his forgiveness for saving us. Confess to him the things that you've done that are sinful and against him. Ask God to help us be quick to repent when we realize we have sinned. Ask him for help whenever we're tempted. And worship Jesus because of the price he paid for our sin so we can receive mercy and forgiveness from him. If you have any questions about what you've learned today, anything you come across in your Bible activities or your studies together as a family, be sure to email us and we would love to point you to, a, to more of God's truth. Have a wonderful week, everyone. See you again soon.